Well, as His Excellency was saying, um, you know, there's so many investment opportunities here right now. We were talking quite a lot about Dubai's Vision 2040 yesterday. It's something I previously mentioned, you know, being able to double the amount of green spaces here, ensure that uh, everybody is within about 800 metres of different public transport systems. And, you know, then we hear about different initiatives uh, here in the market uh, designed to help people, uh, you know, change the way they live, work, and they do business. And uh, the amount of incentives here in the market at the moment uh, just gives... I think so many different opportunities for people all around the world, particularly I think what our lockdown was about six weeks and uh, you look at so many other markets who are still only gradually reopening now and uh, it's an exciting place to do business. Well, our first town hall for the day is going to be taking a little bit of a shift. We're going to be talking about the rise in smart cities and the latest reuse and regeneration projects in the region. Of course, including the incredible legacy master plan for none other than our location today, Expo 2020 Dubai. I mentioned earlier that 80% of this site is going to be turned into a city called District 2020. It was going to be used for generations to come. Now, this is important because cities globally now account for around for more than half of the world's population. Now, of course, this can put major challenges when it comes to infrastructure and equity as well. Now, these millions of people each and every day, all of us, create a deluge of data from the way we live our lives, the decisions we make, and most of this data went to waste until recently. Now cities are adding sensors to be able to capture this data and using AI to be able to analyze it and change the way that we make decisions. Now this is important because it can have a major impact on the way we live our lives, from being able to cut down on traffic jams on the commute to work, to scheduling more garbage collections in busy parts of the city. And it impacts both the day-to-day -day operations as well as the longer term planning of a city. But of course, with all this increased intelligence, with increased all of these sensors, also comes a lot more security challenges. Well, I'm very excited to be joined by our esteemed panelists this morning. Please welcome to the stage alongside us, Franco Atassi. He's the CEO of Smart Infrastructure at Siemens Middle East. They're doing some incredible work when it comes to infrastructure and smart cities. And they're going to be a permanent tenant here at Expo 2020. Please also welcome Nadima Mera. She is the Vice President of District 2020 here at Expo 2020 Dubai. Really excited to hear her thoughts on, on the legacy project here. And we're also very pleased to be joined by Corey Thompson, the country head for the Middle East at IWG Regis, and engineer Ayat Nafi. She's an incredible architect and an urban planner from Jacobs, joining us all the way from Qatar today. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for all of you for joining us this morning. A really exciting uh, opportunities and technology on offer when it comes to smart cities. But, you know, I think when we talk about a smart city, that's quite a wide description. So what would you say? What is it about a city that can make it smart? Who would like to start? I can? Yes? Good morning, and thank you for having me. So... Um, Defining a smart city is, is, is actually a challenge. You know, there is nothing called here is a smart city package. Take it and your city will be smarter. But mainly if we want to summarize it, it is a city that is intuitive and responsive to its residents that make their lives easier to live, to work, to grow, as was mentioned by His Excellency earlier. So that's in general a smart city. However, it's a journey to accomplish what a smart city might look like. So uh, to me, that's a broad definition of a smart city. It's broad, it's a journey, it takes a while. There's not one package that makes it a smart city. Yeah, agreed. If I could, we, we actually, as District 2020, when we started looking at how we wanted the legacy of Expo 2020 um, to be, the technology infrastructure that we inherit from Expo 2020 is second to none. And that enabled us to create a platform for a human-centric future city. So for us, it's about th that sense of community, about enabling the residents, the tenants, the visitors to be able to enjoy the city and lead very efficient lives without seeing all the technology in the background. But technology changes so quickly. You know, what's smart today 
could become very normal three to six months from now. So I think the bottom line is ensuring as developers that we have the technology layer in place that will adapt as smart cities grow. So Corey, can you give me some examples of different cities around the world that is a smart city? You know, we often hear a lot of excitement about Singapore, for example. Who do you feel is getting it right today? Well, I, I, you've hit right on it. Singapore is one which, you know, for our company of, of how we've grown there and, and it keeps continuing to grow and grow. Um, international companies are continuing to flock. They're already there um, and the expansion of it based on what they've done. But, you know, you, you can't be you can't leave out Dubai. You know, they are, you know, we are, you know, as we're, we're all here. Um, we're way ahead of everywhere else, you know, on what we're doing, what the government has done to make things happen, what, you know, the, the vision of RIRA really in, in making things happen um, for residential, but for us, for commercial, for easy for people to work. Um, everything about it, Dubai is probably, you know, should take the lead from Singapore in the years to come. So give me some examples of how you feel Dubai is smart. I mean, we've seen things like the Dubai Paperless Initiative. We've seen, um, I think it's about 98% of Dubai government initiatives are now online. But in terms of the everyday things that affect our lives, you know, obviously we've seen the trial of driverless flying taxis. When am I going to be able to jump in a flying taxi to work? Like, what are, what are some tangible examples well, I, of how Dubai is uh, really a smart city? So I think that the way we look at it now on, on working and flexible working, that the pandemic really showed us about this, is people want to be closer to home. They don't want to have the hour commute. So Expo 2020 is going to be a prime example. People are going to live here. They can work here. They don't need to. I took the metro here, which was the greatest. If you didn't take it, you should have, because it took 48 minutes from DIFC straight to the door. Um, but if I lived across the street, I'd rather do that, save the hour and a half to actually be here at work and spend more time at home, um, but working in a professional environment, not working from Starbucks. I think we all learned working from home is not as easy as we thought it was, but we don't want to commute. Why do we want to spend an hour, two hours each day stuck in traffic, having to leave at five o'clock? Um, when we can work closer to home in a professional work environment. So that means companies having satellite offices or flexible work locations, or for some people it is working from home. So I think, without going too much off topic like I did, I think it's where Dubai's already done it by creating these areas for people to be able to work smarter from their different locations. And on top of that, of, of setting up businesses, which we deal with companies all the time, everything now that you know, REAR and DED has done to get everything online, makes it easy for everyone. Mm -hmm. oh, Aya, yeah, if I can bring you in here, because obviously you're here with a, a great regional perspective today coming from Qatar. I know you've done some work with FIFA World Cup as well. How is Qatar uh, focusing on smart city development? Well, good morning, everyone. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, Kitty. Before I start my discussion, I would like to, see, to say how I'm pleased today sitting between great minds and holding the mic in Cityscape uh, at Expo after the pandemic lockdown is bringing me the excitement. So welcome to us, welcome to everyone, welcome to the world. Well, if we're gonna say about smart cities, let me put it in a, in a word that smart cities is preparing for the next generation for a sustainable world. It's like a legacy to the next generation. So I would like to say about a project and um, in Qatar, and I, an ideal example actually about, let's say it, regeneration project and reuse. It's located in Souk Waqif. It's called the Heart of Doha. It's considered the world first smart and sustainable downtown regeneration projects, which creates an ideal mixed use of residential, commercial, uh, retails, and civic facilities leveraging connectivity and smart technology as a foundation to the economy, lifestyle, and environment of the country. Moreover, based on, based on a world-class vernacular architecture, Bsharib downtown offers a vibrant, mixed-use and walkable and compact sustainable development projects. 
actually urban designers who will look at the master plan of Msherib uh, downtown, they will analyze that it could be used as a template for developing a new urban living and smart community that carries Qatari identity and heritage that can be exported everywhere. And by the way, Msherib in Arabic means a place to drink water. <laughs> I love that. Um, speaking of, you know, really being a template for the region or the world to use, um, you know, I, I'd love to be able to bring you in, Nadima, here again. You know, you're in charge of this incredible project here at District 2020. Uh, tell me about some of the ways that this city is being, that the city of, you know, Expo is being turned into a city for the future and the ways in which District 2020 is going to be a smart city. Sure. So, um... This incredible site that we're all visiting since October 1st when we opened our doors has actually been thought and planned uh, for from around 2015. So the legacy of Expo 2020 was, was worked on hand in glove with the real estate team that was building out the event. And as Her Excellency Reem Al Hashmi likes to say, we built a city that will host an event for six months. The event finishes at the end of March, but the city lives on. And we go through a, a small transition period of six to nine months. And for those of you that have had a chance to, to walk around the expo, we've built as the host nation about two million square feet of built up area. And you can see those in those smaller pavilions that are in our thematic districts. And those smaller pavilions will transition into residential, commercial, um, F&B, retail, and a lot of the thematic pavilions that, again, we've built as the host nation remain as cultural destinations. So the UAE pavilion, for example, the Saudi pavilion will remain as a cultural institution. Um, the Indian pavilion will remain and become an, a trade center. So. There's a lot of, when we call it a mixed-use development, it's truly mixed in that there will be academic, there will be cultural, there will be residential, commercial, and it's a 15-minute city, which goes back to what we talked about. People don't want to commute to work anymore. They realize how good that work-life balance was during the pandemic for some of us. <laughs> And for those of us with kids, it, it proved challenging. But it shows that that work-life balance is important. And you don't want to spend hours in traffic or, or, or arriving to work only to leave and rush hour later on. So with that 15 minutes, it's, it's built right around us. So um, the metro, I've taken the metro here, and it's incredible. It's, it's a, a, a half hour journey from where I live, and I'm right at the heart of Expo when I get off of it. Um, and with regards to the smart city, so the future enablement, what we're looking at is from an ecosystem perspective, I think what's critical is, yes, we have commercial tendencies, but we're treating it more as a curation. And we're speaking to our tenants that are in specific industries and technologies. So what's important for the growth of, of the region from an industry perspective, smart cities, smart logistics, smart mobility, industry 4.0, you see those as critical growth sectors and emerging, um, emerging industries within the region and then the technologies that support those. And so the reason why we already have tenants that are signing up like Siemens, um, Siemens Energy, Terminus Technologies that's coming from Beijing and setting up their first headquarter internationally at District 2020, DP World that will open up a logistics institute, the reason for that is they want to be in this ecosystem that is built for them for them to be able to succeed and grow and scale and innovate in this human-centric community. So the smart city platform that we've built to enable all of this will ensure that people are able to live and work um, very efficiently and sustainably and co-create together further solutions in those areas. Um, one thing that we talked about with mobility is 
when you get from the metro, when you arrive, one thing we're building in District 2020 is an autonomous vehicle transit system that will be able to get people around the site so that you don't have to own a car if you live in District 2020. You can just use micro-mobility and move around the site. And I think that's one of the exciting things, uh, talking about the 15-minute cities. It's something we're going to be exploring with our architects later today. So, um, Nadima, in, in addition to the autonomous vehicle system, uh, what are some other ways that we're seeing IoT or AI or sensors? How is that going to be used within District 2020? What are some you know, tangible examples that, that most of us will be able to see? So we obviously have incredible security because of the World Expo. We will tone that down a bit for District 2020 since it's not hosting a, a worldwide mega event, but the security element will still be there. It uses a lot of AI. Uh, the building management system, we've got about 130 buildings that are connected on one building management system, and we utilize a software to analyze the data so that we're able to operate those buildings at, at, its, at the most efficient um, possible and ensure that you know, savings are put in. And that gets translated to the tenants. Mm -hmm. And then all our buildings, for example, are lead gold. We will be the first community in the Middle East and the region that will be well certified. Mm -hmm. And that's, again, about that work-life balance. It's not so much a smart element, I think it's become a critical element. Companies want to locate where their, their employees are happy. And that happiness factor, it's, it's the agenda of the government of Dubai. The tolerance factor is, is another agenda of, of, the, of Dubai government. And these can be seen in how happy people are when they're living in these communities. So wellness is a, is a and many of you that have seen the site, we've already built a five kilometer jogging path and people are, are jogging in the mornings. We're building a 10 kilometer bike path. We have 36,000 square meters of green park space that will be retained. So it goes beyond just the smart I think it's about livability, you know, and sure, the smart element is there and it's critical um, to seamlessly enable you to enjoy life, but we also need to look at the other things as developers we build that make a difference to the lives of the people living in, in our developments. And I think you're spot on. I think, you know, having those two work hand in hand together, it's about improving people's quality of life, isn't it? Having that seamless, efficient, easy experience. So, Franco, I'd love to bring you in here because you are one of the first fixed tenants at District 2020, doing some incredible things with infrastructure when it comes to smart city development. So how is technology changing in smart cities and, and what are some of the challenges that brings? Obviously, security, um, cybersecurity is a big one. Yes, thank you. Um, let me just kind of give, uh, before I answer that directly, if we look at the, the vision of Dubai, you know, it was once to be to, to, to host the most magnificent architecture and buildings, and we see that sprawling all over the place, right? Um, now it's harnessing technology to go towards a revol revolutionary vision of smart cities and smart buildings and smart communities. Um, the world is, is transitioning that way. The, the digital, utilizing technology and innovation uh, and data, it's connecting people and creating communities. Okay. So uh, what is happening here at Expo as an example? And I think, Nadima, you, you, know, you, were, you set the blueprint for Smart City, but I think you also set the blueprint, as you mentioned earlier, of how to start thinking of beyond this mega event and putting the right infrastructure for people like us to come. And not only to enjoy work, also to enjoy living here at some point. And, and, and as you mentioned, you know, it makes it that much easier for people to live here because you just want to park your car and not go anywhere, right? And enjoy dining, jogging, whatever meets your purpose uh, as part of a big fabric. Um, let me give you an example. In, in America, we, we come to our homes, we park our cars in the garage, and there's a backyard. And I have no idea what my neighbors are doing or what the community, sense of community is. 
And, and here, what I see is living here in a community that I interact with people for multiple reasons, whether we are in a secured area, whether it's a, it's, there is common things that the community enabled us to, to do, uh, it just gives us more sense of belonging. And another example, and that was mentioned uh, earlier, when you bring visitors here to the city, what do they see? Or what do they actually, they see modern? And what is the first thing that comes to their mind? Safe and clean. Yeah. I can go out any time in the evening, any time in the night, I'm safe. And look how clean that is. So coupling that with um, a smarter ways to actually make better decisions uh, uh, on how to live and how to take care of your residents and how to make it more investor friendly for people to protect their investments, this is what attracted us. So uh, we're very proud to say that you know, with Expo, um, it's been a journey. As I said, there's nothing called smart city. Uh, it's a journey to, to get in, to, to, towards a smarter um, uh, infrastructure and city. I was here when it was sand and then the first gaff tree and saw it, but I had no doubt that it would become like this. And, and it, there, it, there's a part of our heart because we have been part of that, you know, the, the people that developed this, if you may, as, as, as an organization. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it's a marvelous job that's done here. Uh, with regards to security and cybersecurity, okay, it, it goes along now. Cybersecurity, uh, it, it's, it's something that we all harness and we all, you know, are involved with across the board, not only from the manufacturing to our residential to our office areas to our cities. Yes, it's something that every company, everyone that manufactures a, 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 a digital device, a smart device, have that in mind to make sure that all residents and all occupants and inhabitants are safe. I mean, obviously, we, it's something that we all have in mind, but the ramifications of a smart city and what can happen when that's hacked. I think uh, last year in Toronto, I think they were looking at developing a smart city. Those plans ended up getting scrapped because there were a lot of concerns around cyber security. Uh, research has shown internationally uh, that in some parts of the world, the passwords for traffic light systems are just very easy to yes. hack, not as secure as they, are, they should be. So, you know, how do we prevent that from happening apart from saying, you know, we're all aware we must all be responsible. Because it's not just individual personal security, isn't it, when we're talking about, you know, exactly. a city and all of its inhabitants. Exactly. Even when you put cameras in your home, you've, you know, you're always afraid somebody would hack, right? And, and just... So, with everything that we do, cybersecurity is the number one priority, especially with connected devices. And what... How we make it smarter is connecting devices, sensors, and so on and so forth. This is how we get data, we analyze it, and then we make smarter decisions. And that is prone to being hacked, right? So cybersecurity is the, 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 the center of everything that we do. So we have cybersecurity officers in every location, cybersecurity developers for our products and solutions and services. And we work with third party to make sure that it is safe from a cyber perspective. So it's, it's a key priority for us absolutely in everything that we do right now. Mm -hmm. Corey, if I can bring you in here, I think one of the other exciting trends that we've seen in the last couple of years, certainly spurred on by the pandemic, has been not only the shift in technology and smart cities, but, uh, but also the way that work-life balance and office space is changing. Uh, you've been responsible at Regis for a big change in the future of offices. So how is that looking? How is it integrating with smart city technology? Um, I, I, hello. I think one of the, the, well, the biggest thing, and it was just touched on, is the, the, the worry of being hacked, so to speak, um, and having a good network, internet security protocol and networking being monitored. So for us now, it, when we look at, you know, you take a large corporate company that has their own IT uh, security team, they have everything looked after, but when they come into a new market, they start to use a flexible workspace. The first thing they ask us is, what is the IT security of your system? Hence why we have so many repeat large corporate companies is because of the security. And without that IT uh, security for the large banks and that, they're not going to be able to grow mm -hmm. and move around and have the satellite offices, which I talked about earlier. And that is crucial in any new area. So, you know, Expo having this great infrastructure in place already lends to that now. It's not looking like somewhere in, you know, the old part of Dubai that may not have uh, some of the security in the building already, we have to bring lines to do it. So I, I think as soon as we 
get more areas, never mind cities, but I think it's you know the little sub areas within Dubai that were talked about earlier, um, fully smart. Um, I think will make a huge difference for the, the, the corporate clients as well. Aya, what do you think? What changes have you seen take place in Qatar when it comes to smart city technology or the office of the future? Well, regarding the office of the futures, let put a real estate as a service. We can see how smart technology has showed us how it's enabling employees to work off sites while it's enhancing a far more creative and sharing culture between companies, business units, and individual teams. And don't get, don't get me wrong, location and site selection is still and will remain important. While this will require a far more flexible and adaptable building and workspace than before. So design it smart, not hard. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I want to open up to the audience and see if we have any questions uh, for our audience today, for our esteemed speakers on stage. Uh, if you do have a question, please do approach the microphone in the middle. Come on down, and we'd love for you to tell us uh, your name and where you're from. Hi. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm Mustafa from Stockholm, working as an urban planner and also host of Urbanistica podcast about the smart city. I would love to ask you, what is the, the biggest challenge that District 2020 are going to face, in your opinion? Thank you, Mustafa, for the question. I think the biggest challenge that we faced, and I'm gonna use past tense because I think we've, we've gotten over it, was how we're going to build a city that will host this mega event for six months. And there was, there was challenges around that, and we had some of the best urban planners working on it, architects, that, so that it becomes then a mixed-use development. And I think that the way that you, you look at that naturally evolved into this human-centric smart city. We're close to an airport. Maktoum International is right next to us. So, Fortuitously, it didn't allow us to build tall buildings. So all our buildings are low rise, and you know, it, it just so happens that that's what people want now. They want that, that uh, cozy feeling of living in a, of a community. As Franco said, I want to know my neighbors. I want to go to the park. So those challenges, I think, were, were fixed. And during the pandemic, I think we all held our breath and looked at how we're going to change cities as a result of the pandemic and safety and, and health security. And I think the solution was, you know, in, in Dubai and the UAE, their reaction to it, really the leadership kind of set the, set the bar for how we, should, how we should adjust our developments to that, um, to ensure that while the future of work will change and we're going to have real estate as a service, people still want to be able to communicate with one another and they don't want to live in a high rise and, and be isolated. They want to be part of a community. So I think the biggest challenge previously was how do we, how do we adjust? How do we go from city to event and back to city and do it quickly? You don't want to mothball buildings for a long time. You don't want these beautiful architectural buildings to stand still for, for a long period of time. So I think we solved that, thankfully. Thank you, Mustafa. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions this morning? Great, so do you wanna come and approach the microphone if you don't mind? And again, we'll just get you to tell us your name and what company you're from, please. Uh, hi, good morning. Thank you very much for a very you know, nice talking. Uh, I'm my name is Satoshi Majima. I'm from Hitachi, you know, working as a one of the corporate staff to help each business need to grow the business in this region. I came here the, upon request from our you know, building and you know, building system department, you know, where you know, I can find out some you know, a direction of the market of the real estate. And I was very surprised to hear that you know, the people living here you know, want to 
uh, live uh, low rise you know, buildings with cozy you know uh, environment. So as a manufacturer of the you know elevators or escalator, how we can contribute you know such demand? Uh, you know how how can we contribute to, to to meet the demand of the you know people who want to have such you know cozy you know living space with you know low rise. Obviously, you know, if the people demand the you know, high, high scraper, maybe they, we, we may expect some demand to supply our elevators or escalators, but if the people, you know, uh, want to have such, you know, low rise, so how elevators, manufacturers or escalators, you know, manufacturers can contribute, you know, to your business. So if you have any insight, I do may appreciate I, may, to hear that. May I, thank you. May I take a stab at this? Thank you. A very good question. Um, to me and to most people, home is a home is a home, whether it's in a high rise, low rise, a villa, etc. You just have to feel comfortable in it, right? And um, being a manufacturer of equipment that is part of our life, especially Hitachi, whether it's heating and air conditioning and other stuff, you just need to be part of that coziness atmosphere that we are creating. So being intuitive and responsive to my need as, 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 a, as a living um, you know, resident or, as, uh, uh, or, or even in, in offices. So um, what does that mean? At the end of the day, what we do smart and coziness and intuitiveness is to eliminate waste. So not use things that we don't have to use. And by that, we're taking responsibility of utilizing what we need, and therefore, you know, if you go through the value chain, we reduce the energy uh, the, uh, uh, generation, and therefore, we say, you know, we, we save Earth and the environment, and, and we de decarbonize it. So as a manufacturer, as I am a manufacturer, my role is to make sure that we have the right approach to create that cozy, comfortable, sustainable, you know, uh, uh, home, or work of place, or environment, right? So how do we do that? Uh, when you connect it in a digital way, as an example, you extract information and data. When you have data that you analyze, you can make smarter decisions. I need it to be an X, Y, Z parameter today because I am not here. Or you include artificial intelligence or you have something in your palm of your hands that would get your home or office or location ready as you're driving in. So that's how you, you know, in, in my opinion, that's how we all become part of that journey towards smart, which is at the end of the day, it's really sustainability. If we take smart, we make smarter decisions, then we eliminate waste, then we're saving the environment, we're sustainable. Do we have any other questions this morning? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, I'd love to ask each of you your key takeaway, your key message for the audience today. Corey, I might start with you. I think for me, of just hearing about Expo 2020 and really of, of how it's going to grow and, you know, thinking about, you know, what our business is of flexible working and the way the shift has been to people wanting to work close to home in that 15-minute city where, you know, even here it could be a five-minute city, so to speak. Um, and that, the, you know, the opportunities and seeing what is planned um, for, the, you know, these smart cities and how it's going to really change the way people work, um, which we believe is, is already the change has started. Um, it started before the pandemic. It's, it's escalated now because of the pandemic. And then having somewhere like Expo to really be the, that leading site, I think it's going to be uh, great for, for our business uh, in general um, and for Dubai. So look forward to it. Exciting times. Aya, what are your thoughts? Well, I would like to say about while the futurist revealed the truth about how the modern life was all about speed, traveling quickly, and information flowing swiftly, the creative urban designers are constantly and actively taking the advantages of the smart technology and adding it, add a new dimension to the future cities without losing the sociocultural identity. What are your thoughts, Nadima? Thanks. So I'm going to move away a bit from smart cities in particular and talk about Dubai as a city and how, you know, there was a question asked to His Excellency about 
the oversupply or that there is a lot of supply in the market. And I, I concur with him 100%. We just came from an international event and we had du the uh, Dubai, a future city expo. There was, it was a startup innovation based event and we were mobbed because we had Dubai on our stand. People have heard about Dubai. They know how we have, we have established that resilience that got us through the last year and a half, two years. You're going to see more traction in the market. You're going to see that traction, not just because Expo 2020 and District 2020 are a smart city, but because Dubai has evolved into such a smart city and our innovation agenda in general is attracting global notice. And I'm very curious to see over the next five years how that will evolve for Dubai as a city and, and then translate to District 2020 as, as one of the central business districts of, uh, of Dubai. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, you know, there, there, there is a fact that, or a, that seven billion people will actually live in urban areas by 2050. So 2050 is only around the corner, by the way. So the pressure of mobility, resources, pollution, and everything is coming, and we have to deal with it. So only digital way, smarter way of how to handle these things is the way to go to move forward. And I go back to District, to Expo 2020 and District 2020. Uh, Nadima, you have 25 people are gonna visit you in six months, 25 million people. So you have the, the pressures of any mega city uh, in a shorter time. And, and what That's you... why we have Siemens. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So you've embedded technologies and infrastructure to, uh, to enable you to safely, and, and, and you use technology with purpose to host these, you know, these visitors and enable a good experience. That is exactly a mega city in the future. You know, it, it is, we will have to build Manhattans every so many years to accommodate these seven billion people. So digitalization is the key here, and at the end of the day is we want to pursue ESG principles, right? Uh, in, uh, energy, sustainability, and governance uh, to, to be a, as part of, of protecting the resources that we have, right? And we've seen it throughout the pandemic, uh, whether it's a company, whether it's a residence, whether, you know, People that did not have digital as part of their, they were impacted more than others. One last comment, I am not surprised, but I'm very impressed. Major developers, major developers in the UAE are coming to us and, um, and they have thousands, if not millions of square feet of development. They said, what is your technology in two years? Not what, what is your technology today? What is your technology gonna look like in two years? Because that's what we're interested in. This is to, to protect their, the investors, the residents, and how they're measuring their impactfulness is by uh, tenants' uh, satisfaction or happiness, happiness index. That's how they measure it. So for me to see that from that transition, uh, there's nothing but uh, good things are coming our way, I guess. So thank you. Very well said. I like that technology with purpose. And uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to have a look around the Expo 2020 Dubai site, I really would encourage you to do so. Uh, close to 200 country pavilions and the way they're using technology and sustainability is genuinely fascinating. But even just walking around the site, you see these little mini robots, uh, Optimus. I know they've been uh, set up by Terminus, one of the permanent tenants at District 2020. Uh, you've got them serving food, making coffee, the way they're managing crowds, the security as well. It is generally uh, not like anything I think the world has seen before. Um, thank you so much for joining us this morning. A really interesting discussion about smart cities and we really appreciate your time. Thank you. Please join with me in thanking thank our panelists today. Thank you.